This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. What we're going to talk about in this session uh, is the role of corporate America and uh, uh, what kinds of uh, issues involving climate, uh, sustainability, et cetera, uh, that we're seeing in the corporate world. So let me uh, introduce our, our, our two guests. Um, and I have a few questions uh, for them, uh, but then we will take uh, some questions from the audience, time permitting. Um, to my far left is Tamara T.J. DiCaprio. She is the Senior Director of Environmental Sustainability at Microsoft. Uh, she works closely with her colleagues to develop and has worked to develop an internal carbon footprint strategy, establish an internal corporate governance model, and shape the direction of Microsoft's internal corporate carbon reduction policy. So thank you for joining us, TJ. Um, and our second panelist to my immediate left is Stella Lee. She is Senior Vice President of BYD Company Limited. Uh, she's also the president of BYD Motors Inc., which is a Southern California-based company that imports renewable power products, green energy products, and zero emission vehicles from China. So welcome, Stella. So to get us started, I'm gonna ask each of you to give us uh, two minutes uh, to talk about your own uh, company's efforts in uh, and around mitigating climate change and carbon emissions. And so Stella, why don't we start with you and then TJ. So Stella? Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background for BYD. 21 years ago, BYD is just a small company with 20 people. And now we have 180,000 employees. And then our mission is to focus on the green transportation. Just as our name, build your dreams. Our dreams is like a, we have like a collect uh, sun energy direct from solar and from wind. And then we can store in the battery and then we can electrify the transportation. So by this target, BYD so far is the biggest battery manufacturer in the world. We produce one million cells per day for cell phone industry. Then we will have 10 gigawatts hours battery for transportation and for the battery storage. And then three years ago, we came to California, we invest our manufacturing in Lancaster, California. And then we're building the R&D to develop the like, local uh, like, production, local R&D to focus on, we call the seven plus four plus one strategy. Like a focus on the fleet transportation, focus on the airport, and also port uh, wide mining industry for the electrify all the fleet, all the transportation. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's yes. great. TJ? Thank you, Janet. And uh, I'd also like to say that it's such an honor to be in the company of such accomplished individuals today. And also to make a little bit of a plug, I am a proud alumna of UC Santa Barbara uh, from <laughs> Environmental Studies. <laughs> and, uh, Go Gauchos, yeah. Yeah, go Gauchos. <laughs> Multidisciplinary approach with uh, environmental studies and a, a big emphasis on economics from Dr. Mead and Garrett Hardin from uh, the environmental side. So it's a pleasure to be part, part of the, the process today. And at Microsoft, we, uh, we very much agree about bending the curve and our understand that climate change is a serious challenge that needs to be addressed by all sectors of society. And as a result, in 2012, we made the commitment to operate carbon neutral. And as part of that, we put a price on carbon that we do charge our business units. And so we are committed to keeping our own house in order and our own environmental footprint and reducing that. And then secondly, as well, to help our customers reduce their footprint through using technology to drive radical efficiencies 
And then lastly as well, to work with our partners to accelerate and advance research in this area to mitigate climate change. That's great, that's great. Well, let me just begin the discussion um, uh, with the two of you and, and ask the question, how do you get kind of the long-term risks associated with climate change reduced to an annual or quarterly profit and loss statement uh, and a return on investment kind of uh, measurable? Um, yeah, because in the end, in, in corporations, you, you are there to make money. So uh, how, how do you make that translation? And I don't know which of you would like to go first. Okay, so, but first I'd like to correct one maybe perception, wrong perception. A lot of people thinking about like a green zero emission costs a lot of money. But in BYD case, it, it, it is, it's not like this. So for example, our bus, it, uh, like a, it's saving the money. So we have the demonstration. We have the AVTA running our bus for one year. We have our like a certain buses running at uh, some university in Palo Alto. Then I don't allow you to mention the name <laughs> for two and a half years. But then their data actually is showing it's like a 20% saving on the cost. And then I have a one meeting someday with the chairman of the board of, board of AVTA. He told me, Stella, your biggest, strongest sales speech is not that you reduce CO2 emission, it's cost saving. In my operation, I think running electric bus is cost 35 cents per mile, but my Diesel bus will cost me $1.5 per mile. So it means the per mile are saving more than $1. Then for the, my operation is 12 years, it's running 800,000 miles. Then it's like a save of more than $800,000 in 12 years. That means I can get the next round bus free. Mm -hmm. So this is a, Maybe the different case, the same thing we're running our buses in Colorado University, then for like a three, two and a half years, then they're saving the money. So then it's reliable. I have the like a uh, lunch meeting with the director. He said, Stella, my job, the university is not to pay me for reduced CO2, it's pay me to make sure my transportation go to the field on time, on schedule. I will tell you I love your bus because the one time you save my life. So there is a weekend, There's, they schedule somebody to change some vault on their diesel bus. If they don't change, they are not, they cannot legally running the operation. But that guy got sick, they did not send a notice. So they did not change in the weekend. Then the next morning, they came to the operation. Then it's like all the diesel bus could not run. But the BYD 13 electric bus, I think, I put them fully running, it's so common. We charge in the evening, in the day, in the morning, we came here, the bus is ready to run. It's not, it's very common to use, it's reliable. So that's the reason I love your bus, I'm gonna to do more electrification. Then the second expert for the uh, for zero emission technology is also the, like a job creation. Like a BYD, three years ago, I came here with only less than 10 people. Now, in, we have like a close to 200 people. Now I'm in the process of work expanding our facility manufacturing in Lancaster to 500. Then three years, five years, it will be more than 1,000 employees there. Mm -hmm. So it's a local job and a local economy. And then I add another point is a local R&D. So we now created the R&D team. I cannot do some advertising. We are open to recruit the students <laughs> from UC system <laughs> in different areas. <laughs> so yeah, send all the information to me. We're open because in the next five years, we need to build a local R&D to do the el electrify all the fleet, like buses and the refuse trucks and the delivers trucks and also the like a, uh, every construction trucks and the forklift and the equipment, every equipment you use the engine, you use the like a uh, gas, then we can electrify with a simple technology, battery and the motor. Then we're also thinking about the automatic driving. So this kind of project we will build locally is innovation. So by this, if you change this perception, you will view the business case, then it's really the, it's not the cost us money. It's a saving, and also you bring the job, you bring the innovation. Mm -hmm. Plus, I, I really appreciate enjoy working with your CIO office. Mm -hmm. We have very exciting news to announce. Then they agree 
and the author is here from <laughs> represented the CIO, and then saying they will using your one billion right. like your funding right. to do the leasing program. So then they will buy the bus and then they lease to each campus. So then each campus can like save the cost, enjoy the saving from the day one, then you achieve your zero emission goal for transportation. And also at the same time, then the, our patient fund can get a good secure return in next 12 years. So because of BYD, we offer the transportation, the, the, all the fleet, the battery warranty is 12 years warranty. So then if a lot of scientists here, sitting here, professor, they know the technology is very simple. It's a battery and a plus motor. And then we cover the battery warranty, then zero risk. So, so uh, your, po your point is that there is a, a strong business case to be made to, to fill this space. And um, as entities like uh, the university uh, uses this investment capital to support yes. it, that, that, that's a partnership that works. Um, TJ, you probably have a different type of, of uh, model. So how do you get climate change from the, the ground into the Microsoft boardroom? Well, thank you, Janet. I think the answer is really embedded in the question, which is the success that we've been able to make in reducing our footprint and changing lives around the world has been in that we did embed ourselves into the financial cost structure. And we did that three ways, by putting a price on carbon, by charging our business units. Every quarter we charge them that price on carbon, I won't say the tax word, we charge them this price on carbon. Mm -hmm. We collect those funds that are associated with the emissions that they produce based on their energy consumption. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we earmark those funds towards environmental initiatives. So it's all very solutions based. Mm -hmm. And that's been very critical. And, and I'd say the three tips that we have are definitely to align with the business strategy and speak a common language. We are now talking price on carbon, not metric tons of carbon. Mm -hmm. And that's been a critical difference. And then the positive role that each individual makes in the solution and focusing on the solution. And then the focus on delivering tangible results. The first three years that we uh, implemented our carbon fee, our price on carbon, we have purchased more than 3 billion kilowatt hours of green power. We've reduced our metric tons, 7.5 million metric tons. And we've impacted more than 6 million people's lives through the carbon offset projects in places like Kenya, where we not only reduce carbon, but we also, the funds from those projects go in to build schools and hospitals empowering women and, and preserving wildlife sanctuaries. So, so um, what are the kind of uh, risks associated with uh, uh, climate change that you have to take into account in terms of, say, where you locate new plants or uh, where you uh, think workforce uh, will be or, be or be migrating. I mean, what kind of business risks are associated with climate change from your standpoint? Yes. Well, we definitely take into consideration impacts, potential risks for climate change on the areas that we cite, certainly our data centers as we build our business around the cloud services. Mm -hmm. And in addition, I think some of the challenges that we do face are being able to innovate faster to be able to not only mitigate climate change ourselves, but how our customers um, mitigate climate change. Mm -hmm. But taking a look at how we cite, also in our supply chain, understanding the, certainly the impacts of, of climate change for our suppliers and how that impacts our business as well mm -hmm. and then on the other side of that how climate change can impact our customers so it's a it's a full 360 uh, cycle there absolutely still yeah. yeah so maybe we have different view because we are the manufacturing so we like to see the continuously like a return on the investment we are having mm -hmm. so the biggest risk I think now we uh, from this two-day conference everybody talking about co2 is an emergency but uh, the bigger risk is if we do not put the very strong action plan with the due date, with the ownership, then commit, move the number, then like all the money we invest will become like the change will be tend to very slow. Mm -hmm. So I think now it's the, it's the timing for everybody together to put action plan very strong. Mm -hmm. Like if, for example, like if for UC system, we love the vision. Maybe now from today, you can stop spend any money 
any single dollars into the fossil fuel transportation. Mm -hmm. Everything, then put the target in five years, all the UC system should have the like a uh, zero emission transportation, 100%. Mm -hmm. It's tough, but uh, we as a private company, we have technologies available, it's a scale up, it's commercialized, can support. Mm -hmm. And then, Maybe put the another thing is a little bit incentive. If any like a fleet manager in any campus achieve this goal, they can get maybe 20, 10 or twenty percent like annual bonus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of sweet and a little bit pressure. Mm -hmm. Then you can happen. So if we can make you see uh, today, I was uh, like a experiment experience listening the, all the everybody talking about our common goal and the, your vision. Very impressive. I think uh, you see system under the your leadership can really make the change the example to demo the whole world, not only in U.S. The reduce CO two emission it's uh, durable and it's cost saving. It's the like uh, economic. So this kind of story we didn't have like uh, available in the world. If we UC system can be the first one to demonstrate this kind of success and this data, I think uh, then you start the wave or change the whole world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't say it better myself. Actually, <laughs> that, that, that's great. Well, uh, you all have been involved in in uh, climate business issues. For, for years, and I, I'm, I, th I would be interested in knowing what kinds of obstacles you have uh, had to surmount or overcome uh, uh, as as climate has begun to rise in the in the consciousness of corporate leaders. Yeah. Um, did you ever meet get met with skepticism and <laughs> how can we do this and that sort of stuff? Yeah. Well. Yes, and I think the challenge, the primary challenge we have faced is the ability to innovate faster. Certainly whether it's technology to allow live streaming to happen more seamlessly, or the emerging technology for renewables and clean power. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, uh, Microsoft is approaching this very much, very much aligned with our mission statement around empowering people and organizations around the planet to achieve more. And this focuses on how critical a role that information plays on our ability to be able to come up with solutions and innovate. And then how we see technology being able to bring surface data and being able to bring data to life in order to be able to build that sustainable future. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you? Did you ever yeah, hear always. Some skepticism and yeah? <laughs> I never. <laughs> Actually, five years ago, like most of the challenges, I don't believe the battery technology. I don't believe the technology will work because the EV is not a new stuff. In 1970, we already have EV1. It failed. I tried some like EV e-bus e-truck. Failed. Cost a lot of money for me. So I don't believe that. But after two years, three years now. The challenge is they start to believe the technology is working, mm -hmm. especially after we put a 12 years warranty, then the people say, okay, I, I trust technology now. But then the second piece, I don't have funding because the electric a bus, electric trucks is too expensive. You almost like a put all the, in the 12 years, the total life cycle cost, we call the ownership cost, is 20% cheaper than diesel bus. But the problem is the, the front capital investment is like a 60%, 70% higher. Then the savings, the 80% savings come out in 12 years. Right, then the, the people, tail, right. The tail, then the people saying, I don't have money. Who will pay this capital investment in the front? So that's the reason I admire you see like your OP, now your CIO office commit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this change. I'm going to put the capital investment in front. Then all the companies, everybody can, can lease. So this is what gave the biggest change. Mm -hmm. So this, I think now we have a solution, especially from you. Then later on, use your one billion. I hope in the future you can allocate 10 billion or more money there. <laughs> and uh, also the, the return will be good. And then the, now the third challenge. Oh, wait, I just wanted to mention, and the return on the investment that we're making will be good. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a guarantee it will be good. You will be, you will satisfy. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. Then the third one 
it's actually it's now I think uh, now the later we will listen to governor's speech. I think it's a policy regulation. How we in place the regulation very tough. For example, like uh, recently we're talking about the port. In five years we should have an AOA port, uh, like a uh, AOA and the Long Beach port, zero emission for all the transportation. In five years, if we, you need to have a regulation give punishment for if somebody continue to use fossil fuel transportation will be cost more expensive mm -hmm. and uh, anybody to use zero emission transportation will be lower cost. Mm -hmm. So if we have the in place very strict law in short term, not to put it 10 years because by human nature, I don't worry about something happening in 10 years. I'm more focused on in that one year, three year, five year. So if we can put something like in two years, 20%, in three years, 50%, in five years, 100%, then not the 10 years schedule with only broad number. Divide into small goal, then you'll find it's, it's easier. It's, to do. it's easier. Yeah, so easier to I would say like a, each time you, if you move this three issue away, then everything will happen. Then for the, a lot of people will say, oh, now I see reduce CO2 is part of like a, these two days we take the electric bus, climb the hill, we ride the electric bus. That's what happened to me in now. It's not a far away, it's not now my business. It's your business. Mm -hmm. It's your daily activity. You support that. Yeah. That's great. Well, I, I know that they're collecting question cards, so hopefully that's uh, underway. We'll call on questions in just a minute, but I want to ask one last question and then we'll turn to the audience. But um, you may have noticed we have a presidential election going on. And um, uh, if you were president of the United States, um, from where you sit um, at BYD, at Microsoft, what uh, regulatory changes would you recommend to help companies do more in the climate change space? Okay. Gosh, I'd, I'd put out <laughs> strong incentives to, uh, to, again, circling back to driving innovation and having that uh, fund in the grants to be able to build the research and the collaboration with between the private and the public sector to make advancements to reduce climate change and be able then to, to communicate that out and to encourage uh, the adoption of that and so driving, primarily driving that research and delivering those innovations. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. So? Um, if I'm present, I would like them to do two things. One is a Learn California CARB like an initiative on ZIV program, all the incentive HVIP money, how they turn out the budget to support the green initiative. I think so far California is the best in the world for right. the, all the CO2 reaction. And also plus the several bill like the governor will pass in next like half years. Mm -hmm. Then for the clean up the uh, highway transportation. So this is the model is for from the government. Uh, legislation, it can work, you can make things happen. Then every state need to copy exactly California model. Yeah. Second is that every campus need to learn from UC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from today, like uh, as your speech, I'm uh, sitting there, I think I want to remember every single word you're saying. You are the carbon naturality, like a target. Then you put the, the whole campus, it's a big challenge. You put the targets on 2025. Yeah, you know, if it's now, it need to happen now. We have conference, we share the experience. If we do these two things, everything will come naturally. The business will come naturally. The economy will come naturally. Then the job and the production job, innovation will come naturally. That's it, simple. Awesome. Right. <laughs> simple. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to be taking uh, questions directly from the floor, if you would. Great. Uh, right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for a terrific uh, panel. Question for BYD. I guess I, I confess to being um, pleasantly surprised at the momentum you're describing in, in the face of what are obviously very low oil prices. I know that presents a big challenge for EVs. I'm just curious. I, I think energy storage in many ways is kind of where the solar industry was you know, 10 years ago, right? And we've had this huge success in California with solar going from 50 cents a kilowatt hour to now below 4 cents, right? Over that time period, most of the policies that worked for solar were actually market pull, so cash incentives for rooftop solar and, and mandates to do large-scale solar, uh, less money into R&D. In terms of what you, 
what's needed really to drive EVs forward. How, what policies would you most like to see? More money for R&D or for incentives to encourage purchasing or for EV charging infrastructure? What would most benefit uh, wide scale you know, deployment of EVs? Right. Yeah. Uh, Stella and then teach. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think uh, more money now should go to the charging infrastructure. So, because once you have charging infrastructure, like uh, for example, yesterday we learned something like in UC campus, you have a transportation area is a major like CO2 emission. So we can we can do several steps. First step, focus on all the fleet. Every fleet, like buses, trucks, and the, like the fleet car, facility vehicle, 100% zero emission because it is manageable. It's controlled by the like present office. Then it's everybody aligned. We should do that. Then the second, once we did that, then you automatically building the charging infrastructure. Then you're building the experience to use the EV to use the. To charge your vehicle is uh, as simple as you charge your cell phone. Every day you go home, you plug in, you go to the office, you plug in, then you never worry about the battery. Then after that, then we move the uh, stage two to put all the charging infrastructure in the parking lot. Every parking lot, we have the charging infrastructure. You can start with maybe 20%, then you give the only electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid car can park this here. Then automatically is the incentive for the students gonna to electrify their vehicle. So once you do like a step by step, then you start between the education and then uh, convenience. Then the, you are gonna to attract more people to uh, to uh, push the electric vehicle. And so. Stimulate demand, and yeah. I can't think of a greater incentive in some areas than a parking space. So <laughs> <laughs> terrific idea, yeah. TJ. <laughs> Well, again, it's helping people feel safe they can get from point A to point B. And that change of mindset now when we look for fuel stations along, along the highway and having that safety of knowing that we can go the distance. Good, good. Other questions? Over here, and if, and if you could identify yourself for the benefit of the audience. Happy to. Bonnie Reese, member of the UC Board of Regents. Uh, great panel, Stella, TJ, thank you so much for your, the work you do and for being here today. My question is for you, TJ. It's about uh, server farms and data centers, the highly energy intensive, and even with the recent EPA rating system, which some say is incomprehensive. I guess my question is to you, what do you see towards carbon neutrality and the future of, of data centers and server farms and especially what areas of technology innovation might, uh, is it already there and it just needs to be uh, implemented? Or might there need to be more technological research and breakthroughs to get us where we need to in that area? Okay, thank you. I think we're making great progress. There, the areas that I would say that we're focusing on is certainly to drive efficiency, not only in the infrastructure of the data centers, but also in the compute utilization, how the servers are used, such that each server is used in an optimum way rather than running some servers without using them to manage and store data, but just having them be plugged in. So there's the whole efficiency. And then there is also the what load we still have to use is that we are greening that. And we're even, even driving efficiency within the supply chain. So how can we bring that energy consumption closer to the server? And working with UC Irvine, as a matter of fact, in research areas around fuel cell technology. And how can we get those fuel cells closer and closer to the server so you optimize that energy consumption and drive, um, and drive more cleaner energy consumption there? And then lastly, it's some of the brilliant thinking of getting together with universities and having the research such that how can we start to think forward where we can have data centers that are in high rises and, and utilize the heat in order to help um, grow agriculture and food such that that waste is then used and methane is circled back to be used as power to be able to supply food for the community. So I think there's lots of ways that we can start thinking uh, in, in big advancements of where data centers can become smaller and incorporated in the full cycle of a community in order to, to continue that energy consumption and drive, drive down waste in many different areas. You all have been terrific. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yeah.